and your spare a coin. I'm Bernardo. I handle the heavy armor at the best defense. I'm also an advanced trainer in heavy armor, so I know what I'm talking about. Have a look at my wares. I'm sure there's something to suit you. That's a good deal. That seems a... That seems a f that's a good deal. That seems a fair price. You got a great an excellent bu a good price for a good customer. You've made a good That's more than... Pleasure to serve you. Pay attention and you can learn a lot. Farewell. You're in Rindir's stuff. Only quality goods for sale here. What? Another? You too. I don't know who you are. You what? You want to be a combatant? <laughs> Look at you! My granny could beat you and she's dead! Wait, you're serious, aren't you? What is it with you people? You walk in, want to be combatants, and your entrails end up decorating my red room. All right, it's your funeral. Welcome to the arena, you filthy pit dog. You're free to fight so long as you know the rules of competition. Now let me give you your battle raiment. It's the uniform of all arena combatants. Do you want a light raiment or a heavy raiment? Here, wear it proudly and keep it in good condition, would you? That way I can give it to some other suicidal idiot after you're dead. Just let me know when you're ready for a match and we can get this over with. Get a move on. 
You haven't run home to mama yet, huh? That's a good sign. So, you ready for a match, or do you just need some information? All right, maggot. Looks like you're suited up in your battle raiment and all set to go. The red room is just over there. When you're ready to get eviscerated, just head up the ramp to the arena. Good luck, and may Azura have mercy on your soul. City. Welcome to the arena. For this match, we've got some fresh meat. Two brand new pit dogs. So let's not waste any time. Let the battle begin. Yeah. Let's get this. By the nine divines, you did it. You actually won. You ain't so bad after all, Pit Dog. You may even survive enough matches to advance in rank. Here, Kit, this is your payout for the victory. There's more where that came from if you can keep on winning. Now go unwind before your next fight. Okay, so you're not a complete loser. Don't get cocky. Let me know when you're ready for a match and you can prove yourself to me some more. <laughs> now that's the spirit. You give the people of Cyrodiil a good show, and I'll make sure you get a decent burial. <laughs> City. Welcome to the arena. Who will prevail? The pit dog from the yellow team or the pit dog from the blue team? Let's find out. Lower the gates. Ha! What's the matter? Getting tired? My Your worst. Okay, so you did it again. What do you want from me, a hug? Take your gold and get out of my face, pit dog. The yellow team ain't gonna fight itself, you lazy pit dog. You ready for a match or what? That's Isabel Andronicus, crabby old woman who sits over there. She's dear to me, so if you wrong her in any way, I'll rip your damn liver out. 
That's me, genius. Down here, I'm the boss. I don't care if the Emperor's ghost is floating around. In the blood works, he answers to me. The first Arena Blade Master, best damned warrior that ever lived, served the Order of Diagna, got killed fighting the orcs. Azura rests his soul. The reigning Grand Champion is Agranagro Malog. His fighting name is the Great Prince. He's an orc. Well, half orc, actually, or. So they say. The important thing is he's been grand champion for nearly a decade. Why? Because nobody's had the guts to face him. The great prince is unbeatable. At least that's what the people of Cyrodiil have come to believe. Maybe it's time someone stepped into that arena and proved them wrong. You fight for the blue team. You fight against the yellow team. In order to fight in the arena, you must wear an arena battle raiment. The battle raiment covers your entire body. You can use your own helmet, shield, and weapon, so choose those items wisely. The battle raiment's already enchanted, so you can't muck with it. But aside from that, anything goes. Magic, stealth, whatever you need to win. You can compete in the arena any day from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. Just come to me. Tell me you're ready for a match, and away you'll go. Got it? Good. If you actually manage to win a fight, don't get any ideas about looting your opponent's corpse. That's strictly forbidden. I heard a rumor that you're an idiot. Any truth to that? You must be downright determined to get yourself killed, huh? Okay, then. Head back up to the arena and try not to die before the gate opens. City. Welcome to the arena. Are you ready for a bloodbath? The winner of this match will advance in rank, so the stakes are high. Pit dogs, show us what you're made of. can't believe I'm saying this, but you're no longer a pit dog. That's right. You've actually advanced in rank. Congratulations, brawler. You know what brawler rank is worth around here? Nothing. Face it, kid. You're still a maggot. You need to keep fighting if you want to be somebody. Okay, brawler, you know the drill. Head up to that arena and show them who's boss.
You're the best the blue team has to offer. Ooh. Ah. Do your worst. You'll never leave this arena alive. wins is okay, kid, but it don't make you grand champion. Here's your payout. Now go clean yourself up before your next match. I'm Brother Joffrey. What do you want? Emperor Uriel? Do you know something about his death? You'd better explain yourself. Now. You brought me the Amulet of Kings? This cannot be. Let me see it. By the Nine. This is the Amulet of Kings. Who are you? How did you get this? What do you know of the Emperor's death? As unlikely as your story sounds, I believe you. Only the strange destiny of Uriel Septim could have brought you to me carrying the Amulet of Kings. The Prince of Destruction he referred to is none other than Merun's Dagon, one of the lords of the demonic world of Oblivion. The Emperor's words, close shut the jaws of Oblivion, certainly suggest that he perceived some threat from Oblivion. But all the scholars agree that the mortal world is protected from the Daedra of Oblivion by magical barriers. I'm not sure. Only the Emperors truly understand the meaning behind the rituals of coronation. The Amulet of Kings is ancient. Saint Alicia herself received it from the gods. It is a holy relic of great power. When an Emperor is crowned, he uses the amulet to light the dragon fires at the Temple of the One in the Imperial City. With the Emperor dead and no new heir crowned, the dragon fires in the temple will be dark for the first time in centuries. It may be that the dragon fires protected us from a threat that only the Emperor was aware of. I am one of the few who know of his existence. Many years ago I served as captain of Uriel's bodyguards, the Blades. One night Uriel called me into his private chambers. A baby boy lay sleeping in a basket. Uriel told me to deliver him somewhere safe. 
He never told me anything else about the baby, but I knew it was his son. From time to time he would ask about the child's progress. Now it seems that this illegitimate son is the heir to the Septim throne, if he yet lives. His name is Martin. He serves Akatosh in the chapel in the city of Kvach, south of here. You must go to Kvach and find him at once. If the enemy is aware of his existence, as seems likely, he is in terrible danger. And please, let me know if there's anything you need. My resources here are limited, but I will help in any way I can. It will be safest here with me. When you return with Martin, we will figure out our next move. I keep a few things here in my chest to resupply traveling blades. Help yourself to whatever you need. Your first priority... One of the youngest blades ever to serve in the Emperor's personal guard. I am glad to hear that he survived, but I fear he will take the Emperor's death particularly hard. The coronation of each new emperor is sealed when he uses the Amulet of Kings to light the dragon fires in the Temple of the One. The dragon fires of Akatosh remain lit until the death of the emperor. His successor then lights them anew upon ascending to the throne. With Emperor Uriel dead and no successor crowned, the Temple of the One will be dark for the first time in centuries. The Elder Council rules in the Emperor's absence by ancient tradition. Chancellor Akato heads the Elder Council and is the closest thing the Empire has to a leader right now. But the Blades answer only to the Emperor, of course. We are not an arm of the government. He is a priest in the chapel of Akatosh in Kavach. He never knew that he was Uriel Septim's son. You need to find him at once and bring him safely back here. The Daedra Prince of Destruction, an inveterate foe of all mortal races. He was involved with Jaegar Thahn's plot against the Empire years ago. It doesn't surprise me to find his hand in the current calamity. Yes, Boris told you right. I am the Grand Master of the Blades. We serve the Emperor and the Septim bloodline. Talos is our patron. You wonder to find me here? Discretion is our watchword. Only a few of us have the honor to serve publicly in the Imperial Guard. I don't have much here at hand, but you're welcome to anything you need from my chest in the reading room. Prior Maberil and Brother Piner may also be able to help. You should speak to them about it if you haven't already. Waste no time. You must find Martin before the enemy does. How do you do? Welcome, good citizen. I'm Brother Piner, and this is Wayne and Priory, a monastery. Can I help you? Here. Perhaps you will find this useful. One of the books I saved from my blades training. You go into danger. Joffrey didn't tell us any more than that, but know that our prayers go with you. Things go from bad to worse nowadays. Priests... Murdered on the chapel altar. Oh, what next? Oh, yes. He'll be in the Priory House somewhere. It isn't widely known, but many brothers of the Order of Talos are also members of the Blades. 
Chapter houses of the order, like Wayne and Priory, provide safe houses for traveling blades as well as our more public religious functions. Blades who are too old for the active service often join the order as lay brothers. We are honored to have Grand Master Joffrey, or Brother Joffrey as he prefers, as a resident here. The blades are closely linked to the Order of Talos. We both serve Talos, of course, and many of our brothers are former blades. I myself was training as a blade when I received the call to serve Talos in a different way. Goodbye. How are you? I know that you are on an important mission for the Blades. Please, if you need a horse, take mine from the Priory Stables. Go with Talos's blessings. Do not fail. How goes it? I'm the shepherd here. Eranor's the name, and this is Waynon Priory. Well, I normally stay out of the affairs of the great folk that come through Waynon Priory to see Master Joffrey. But go ahead and take this hammer. You might have use of it, and I have others. Not much call for smith work around here in any case. Well, we both have better things to do than stand here all day exchanging idle gossip. Good day to you now. What can I do for you? They say that when you murder someone, the Dark Brotherhood comes to you in your sleep. It's how they recruit new members. Be seeing you. How are you? I am Brealis Gawe, and no, we don't sell horses, but we do eat well. The stables are owned by an orc, and you know, orcs and horses. Oh, he's that wanted. Irene Metric moves with such grace. I wonder what it is she does. Take care. Snock Grabura, owner and proprietor. 
we board horses and, well, we don't actually sell horses. Anymore, that is. What can I interest you in? Here you are, just like I promised. Thanks again for all the help. <laughs>